When I go hunting and fishing, you know, I don't mind roughing it now and then, but uh, there's some times when <laughs> I could get used to a vehicle like this. There's all kinds of campers, hundreds of campers here. I'm at the Detroit Camper and RV Show in Novi. It's where we're gonna be in the next half hour. And I gotta get you the message here that camping and RVs aren't about vehicles. They're about people, people relaxing, enjoying themselves. That's what we're gonna talk about the next half hour. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how to be a practical sportsman in comfort. Just coming up on a bridge here. This bridge has a little river going through, and there's Lake Michigami out there. Quite a nice lake. They catch walleye, pike, some big muskie that come out of there. And we just, in fact, just changed our plans just about an hour ago. We were going to go east, but we decided to go west instead. That's one of the cool things about having a pickup camper or an RV. You can change your mind and go somewhere else. And hopefully, if you're not during one of the real busy times of the year, you can find a campsite. We looked up in the, in the campground directory, uh, found the campground, the closest one here, Michigami Shores. It's called Family Campground Ground Resort, and it is a family campground. It has lots of activities uh, for the kids, not only your swing sets and beach and bicycle rentals, uh, all kinds of things. So it's a real family campground. Here we uh, have another scene of the lake as we pull in here. Take a look at that, Maddie. That's a, that's a nice looking lake. We're not gonna be fishing this lake on this trip. We're just gonna spend the night here. But uh, a campground like this, when you get up in the Upper Peninsula, uh, a campground like this is, is in a real wilderness setting. You really feel like you're out in the woods with only a few campers around. It's pretty neat. Driving through a modern campground, you'll see what might appear to be a lot of different styles of campers. Actually, there's seven basic types. Three of them you tow behind a vehicle, and four of them you drive. Now, this one right here I'm in is the least expensive. It's the one that most families, I guess, start off with if they're just getting into RVing on a budget. This is your folding camping trailer, pop-up camper it's sometimes called, or a tent trailer. But it's the, a real family camper for families that are just getting started. The step up from the pop-up is a travel trailer. Another one that you can tow behind a vehicle. You need a little bigger vehicle. These are a little heavier. They're bigger, longer, taller, wider, and a lot more comfortable inside. But the travel trailer is one that a lot of overtired people like to go to, as well as families that need more room. The big daddy of travel trailers is this thing called a fifth wheel. The fifth wheel refers to the hitch, which sits in the bed of a pickup truck. So you need a pickup truck to haul this type of travel trailer. The fifth wheel taller, bigger, roomier, more luxurious even uh, than the travel trailer. Pickup trucks not only can be used to haul a trailer, but you can put an RV right on the back of a pickup truck, like this type here. This is a StarCraft, but it makes a mobile, self-contained RV. Truck campers really appeal to sportsmen. I mean, so much so that StarCraft has got tied in with this field and stream name to market their campers for the hunter and fisherman. Now, this type of RV may look like a pickup camper on the front because it has this coming over the cab, but actually, this is a motor home. This, this unit here, the camper part, is built right onto the chassis of this truck, and this type of unit is called a mini motor home. If you're looking to take short trips, but you want to do it in luxury, you might want this. Now, this isn't really a mini motor home. It's even smaller. It's a van conversion, or a Class B motor home they call them. It's, it's just on a, on a van chassis that on the inside it's expanded and it has all the amenities of a motor home. The seventh type of recreational vehicle is the big one that you can drive yourself. It's the biggest, tallest, longest, most expensive, most luxurious of all. It's called the Class A motor home. Now this is Class A in every respect. It's for people who like to tour around the country. This is the type of machine that John Madden uses as he travels around. I mean, it's got everything. Television set, luxurious seats, chairs, sofas, uh, the lighting, the mirrors. Looks like you're in a luxurious hotel room, but this is a recreational vehicle. Top of the line, Class A motorhome. Well, this is our campsite we pulled into last night. Uh, this is at Michigami Shores, just a little bit west of Ishpeming, Marquette area. We backed into here, put our, our boat here, and of course it looks like a neat setting, and it is. This campground is set up in a series of little circles with the campers. A lot of people have trailers and fifth wheels 
you can see them here. And, and they're quite the rigs, quite the outfits. They have, those people right there have a satellite dish. I don't know if you can see that mat over my shoulder. They got a satellite dish on a tripod mm -hmm. so they can get all the stations. Uh, folks there with a the motor home, of course they bring their boats. Most everybody is gone right now. This is a uh, late morning and they're out doing whatever activities they they do up here in the Upper Peninsula, fishing and sightseeing. But we'll just give you a quick tour. We're getting ready to go fishing ourselves. Come on, follow me, Matt. Uh, this is where we back the camper in. And of course, a campsite like this, a good campsite, has good uh, solid ground that's level. So the level ground, of course, is real important when you're sleeping so you don't roll to one side or the other. And this campsite has full hookups. Uh, we're campsite number 20. This has the water hook up here. We didn't hook up last night. We just used the water uh, for the little water we needed. Uh, electric, so we hooked up to AC, so we have full electric in here. And right here, what this is, this little cap, all of the campsites have them. This is actually hooked to, to a sewer, a septic tank or a sewer system of some type, so we can actually use the bathroom and all of the facilities and the shower in the camper and run the waste right down there, which is pretty neat. So what we're going to do, well, look at, the, look at the wooded setting that we have here. I mean, uh, I, I showed you the little circle that we have set up here. And this campground, there are 80 sites here set up in a series of these little circles. But all of them, uh, really, just like you're in the middle of the wilderness. A lot of people take their RVs into the wilderness, of course. That's the idea. But HW Motorhomes brought the wilderness to the RV show. Quite a spectacular display here. Of course, it's quite a spectacular RV. You hardly call these big motorhomes like this campers. And as we go through, we're gonna show you some of the other things here. This is on a lake that has some pretty good walleye fishing in it. Small walleye, I hear, but, but it's good fishing. And there's a beach. Uh, and in the evening, is when this place is uh, a lot more active than it is right now. Of course, campers, why, why get up at the crack of dawn when you're camping? The whole idea out here is to relax. Uh, so, the, so the folks, they have a lot like the, this trailer right here. Well, they have on the top uh, an antenna for the, for the TV stations. The, the three, three stations come in real clear up here on a regular television. And all the campsites have a fire pit and their chairs and, I mean, this is, this is easy living, very relaxing living. So this is what we did for the evening. Just found the spot, looked up in the, in the directory, the campground directory, and pulled in here. It's great. What does it cost? 20 bucks a night. You get the full hookups. We like it. Well, here's a setup with a fifth wheel trailer that you can see their tube that they run down there into the uh, septic system. And of course, they're hooked up with the electric and with their water, and they have the slide out. That's the thing about a lot of these fifth wheels, they have a slide out, so there's a, a, a lot of living space in there. But they have the full hookup. Those hookups are really dandy if you have a bathroom like is in this motorhome. Look at that, check out the mirrors, the tub, the, the shower, the, I mean, it's a, a huge bathroom. And there's a big galley, uh, the kitchen has lots of room, a dining table, a sofa, a chair, but one thing you don't see in this motorhome, it's a 28-footer, it's a little shorter than most, is the bed. Where in the heck are we gonna get the bed? Well, the Trek motorhome has a patented bed that drops down from the ceiling. Never seen this before <laughs> in an RV, but it's the new way to save space and have comfort, a queen-size bed. Don Weekly at Weekly's RV, down here at the Camper Show, can show you this. Nobody else has a bed that comes down from the ceiling. What we have here is uh, people, uh, apparently, I don't know if they're asleep or not, or they're gone, but uh, they got their shades down here in the front. But look what they have, a stabilizer that's built right in to the motorhome. Of course, it'll jack the front up and hold this steady. So as you're walking through the motorhome, a lot of times the, the RVs or campers, if you don't have legs down on them, uh, you know, to hold it steady, it'll, it'll jostle. Like you do, Maddie, when you get up in the night. The whole thing moves, but that's okay. And they also have a, a fly out here. I guess you call it a fly, a little auxiliary uh, tent. In fact, this, they want you to know who they are. People who have this are the Houstons, Ray and Marlene from Richmond, Michigan. One of the neat things to do in a campground is to walk around and just look for stuff, ideas, things that uh, 
you might want to do at your campsite. Let's see what we have here. These people, oh, look at that, Maddie. That looks like, my guess is, that is an AC-powered ice chest. Does that look like this here? I don't think anybody's home right now. Check, is that, is that what you're looking at? Yeah, is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about this one over here. Check that. Yeah, that's a Coleman AC or DC powered something, but that's plugged into their, their power right there. So they not only have refrigerators inside, they got refrigerators outside. What do they have in the refrigerators? Hey, you know, we don't want to be that snoopy. They got stuff, they got pop, they got, you know, whatever they need. Looks they have a fishing rod there. But anyway, that's a neat idea. That AC powered or DC powered uh, ice chest. So you wouldn't have to buy ice all the time. Hmm. You know, you can take everything you need on the road. These RVs today have everything inside them that your house does at home, starting with the stove. Three burners are standard. You can get an oven underneath, which expands your cooking potential. Microwave ovens are common accessories. Refrigerators and freezers run on gas or battery or AC hookups. A lot of the units today come with air conditioners. They run on AC or a generator that gives you AC electricity wherever you go. Stereo systems, television sets, VCRs, and satellite dishes that work while you drive down the road are available. Of course, there's hot and cold running water, electric flush toilets, showers, bathtubs. You can even get a combination washer and dryer for an RV. Here is a desk, an office set up in the back of a motor home. Lamar, you want to fold that up, please? Sure. This is, uh, this is something new, a new concept. Roseville RV here at the Camper Show is demonstrating this. Of course, you're watching Lamar through a hole that's been cut in the side for demonstration purposes. There we go. Computer stand and the desk goes up. The chair folds and has a little place underneath here. And you say, what in the world are we taking this office apart for? Well, you could use this room right here for the kids to play or to store things. And when it comes evening time, here comes the bed. It's called a Murphy bed. Drops out from the wall. <laughs> I tell you what they don't think of in RVs anymore. This all happens in the back of a motorhome. This, my friends, is camping in 1999. <laughs> Thank you, Lamar. Here, here's a fifth wheel all set up in the campground. We're up at Michigami Shores up here in the Upper Peninsula. But this shows you what they have on the fifth wheels. On the one side here is the slide out. That slide out provides extra living space, makes it much bigger. You can see on the top there's an air conditioner up there. There's also an antenna behind the the bush there for the television set. Bike racks on the back, there's a couple bicycles. And then they have the overhang here, a little lower on one side maybe than it should be. That's the rain. But, uh, but yeah, that would, that would drain the rain off. Good point, Matty. Drain the rain off, because it has, has been raining a little bit up here. But that's a full setup on a fifth wheel. Now hold it, that's not a fifth wheel, is it? Nope. Oh, that is, that is one big trailer. I think these are the folks from Bath. Look, can you see through the screen there? Here we were, hundreds of miles from home, and I thought I recognized Chris Farr, somebody who would drop by the Practical Sportsman Museum in Bath now and then. A couple years ago, she and her family bought an English setter puppy at one of our Puppy Saturdays. How are you? I thought I recognized you when we, when we came through here last night. Oh, when did you come in? Uh, well, we were just driving through getting our campsite. Huh? You gonna come on down? No, sure. Yeah, come on down. I'll do. That so you, way you can hear me over the dog. <laughs> sure. So you have the, you brought your pooch with you. Well, this is slick little ramp for the, what is that, Amigo? The shuttle? Uh, shuttle. Okay. Works. <laughs> but you're from, you're from Bath, aren't you? Or yeah. Or Langsburg uh, area? Hazlitt. Hazlitt? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Yeah, we thought this, we were looking at it from the back, we thought this was a, was, was a fifth wheel, but this is just a huge trailer. Mm -hmm. We had some people that have two boys with muscular dystrophy stop yesterday and ask about the ramp. They're in a pop-up, and this seems to be the answer to their problems. Because hmm. I can get it in, in and out, and the only thing we had to have changed 
is the bathroom door is about five inches wider. And that's mm -hmm. the only thing we had to have changed on the trailer. And they did that at the factory. Wow. And then Steve built an adapter that slides in onto the step. And then we've got 15 feet of fiberglass ramp. Huh. It works great. That's awesome. And the Jake also has a wide front door. Mm hmm Which you gotta kind of shop around for, I guess. Shopping around, you can find all kinds of variations on RVs and doors. Here's a fifth wheel that has a design that a couple manufacturers have come out with, Fleetwood, Playmore. Uh, this is a huge door and a ramp in the back, but it's so you can get ATVs, motorcycles, different types of, uh, you know, toys that you might want to take up camping with you and still have the luxury of staying in a fifth wheel. How do you like this campground? This is really nice. But nice big wide lots which we need with a ramp and we had a pull through site which makes it easier with this trailer. Ah. And uh, we just left Barriga mm -hmm. uh, State Park. Beautiful state park. I really like it over there. We've been gone about a week and then we got to go home and stay home for two days and then we're leaving again. Well terrific. Uh, <laughs> Well, how oh, do how do you like that? Camping, back home for two days, back out State camping Park again. Park. That's the kind of independence you can get with an RV. I mean, you can pick up and go. It's all ready to go any time. Now, we have changed our image to, to Arvum, to go with RVs. Arvum is the Recreational Vehicle Owners Organization of Michigan. It's our brand new organization. It's what we're switching to. We have been called the Michigan Sportsman Development Association for several years. That never really caught on. We're, we're moving ahead with Arvum. That's the identity we're going to have. And this is what we're unveiling here and talking to people about at the Camper Show. So come out, learn a little bit about Arvum. That's where we're headed in the future. This is the uh, end of the road for the campers. I suppose these would be the, the prime sites, the campsites down here uh, next to the L Lake Michigami. Here we got swing sets and all for the kids. A lot of campgrounds, uh, you know, cater more to the senior citizens. And, and don't have these things for the kids, but this one does. This is a family campground. This is the lake that, oh, geez, look at that. I didn't realize, Matt, they had a dock. So you can launch the boat. They probably have uh, canoe rentals. It looks like there's canoes there. Swimming area, picnic tables, little diving platform. There's volleyball net. And this is Lake Michigami. This has walleye in it, I'm sure pike. Fishing has been a little bit slow right now, they say, of course, the first part of July. What do you expect? But look back this way. Here's the, the campsites. Lots of trailers, lots of fifth wheels and big travel trailers seem to be the rage nowadays. Not as many motorhomes. Uh, I'm surprised. I thought I'd see more motorhomes, but it could be that the families tend more to have the trailers. I'll have to check our statistics and demographics on that. For a quick check on demographics, I got some, some statistics here out of a University of Michigan study that was commissioned by the Recreation Vehicle Institute of America. Now, the typical RV owner in America in 1997 was 49 years old, had an income of $47,000 a year, was currently married, and had 40% of them had kids living at home. Now, that's the average. Broken down by type of vehicle, the typical motorhome owner was 60 years old and had a $46,000 income. 15% had a child under 18 living at home. A van conversion owners had an average age of 51. With a $47,000 income, 38% had kids at home. Truck camper owners were typically 47 years old with a $44,000 a year income, 41% had kids at home. Travel trailer owners were 45, made $48,000 a year, 43% had kids. And with fold down campers, the ones used by younger families, these tended to be owned by a 45-year-old with a $49,000 a year income. 66% had kids under 18 living at home. That explains why we saw relatively few motorhomes in a family campground like Michigami Shores and many more trailers. Used to be a TV show on called The Life of Riley. We've just seen, I think, here The Life of Riley. Let's walk into this, Matt. This, I don't know what this... Person. Let's see, I don't know if it was a man or woman right now wearing a baseball cap, reading good housekeeping. I th think, I hope it's a, a woman. Hello there. Hi. 
We just thought we'd come by and check the life of Riley. We were thinking about that old TV show. Yeah, buttons. Yeah, buttons. Now is buttons? Yeah. Is, is buttons a watchdog? Well, not exactly. It'll lick you to death once you pet it. Stop. If it would, if buttons would, would stop barking, it'd be very helpful. <laughs> Matt, this is you. It's barking at. Not barking at me anymore. Buttons. Would you, would you please pet buttons, Matt? <laughs> buttons. Here you go, buttons. Buttons. Stop. Okay, buttons is okay now. <laughs> Oh, I doesn't care for Matt that much. All right, lay down. Okay, he's okay now. So, are you having? Oh, look at this! Look at this! Look at this, folks! This, this buttons cool it. Do you, mind, do you mind if I show the article that you're reading? Look at this. How much exercise do you need, really? Much. Huh? Matt, that's you, or the camera. I don't know. Who are you, anyway? Uh, we do a show called Practical Sportsman oh, on public oh, TV. Oh, oh, oh. Where are you from? Marquette. Oh, yeah. local? Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're from up. Marquette, and you drive yeah. about uh, 25 45 minutes. minutes? 45 minutes. Yeah. Buttons? My daughter and I come up for a week every summer and leave our father and husband home to work. And uh, I w I'd ask you what you do when you're up here, but apparently not well, a lot. Not much. We ride our bikes up the Pashiki. Mm -hmm. Up the Pashiki, we know somebody up there that has a camp, so we go and visit them. And, and yesterday was crummy weather, so we drove into Michigami and spent money at the little stores. And, you know, yeah, ah. we don't do a lot. That's are, the point. Are you thinking about doing any exercise? Or, or, uh, no, it's just the page I was on when you went. I see. Yeah, I don't okay. Know, don't, don't analyze this too much. <laughs> well, this is pretty comfortable. Yeah, it is. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it gets, it, you know, about a week, a year it gets used. Oh, no kidding. What's your name? Uh, Pam Pearson. Pam Pearson. Yeah. Well, it was nice talking with you, Pam. And Buttons, okay. Buttons, it was nice hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a relaxing day. I will, thanks. <laughs> They're coming in from Florida. They're coming in from New York. The so Bielenberg ah. size is coming in from New York and from uh, Ypsilanti. We'll have 70 of us. 70? But you came up here, you got an early start for the yes. whole week. Though. Yes, I'm up here to see the caterers and, oh. you know, and get everything well, ready. Well, you have a good reunion. Thank you very much. Are you Rob? Are you Rob? I'm Matt. No. That's Matt. Okay. Rob has a different show. Oh, does he? That's okay. Rob Trot you're thinking of. Uh, okay. Uh, he was from Dryden. Yeah. Yeah. I have had him on my school bus. I used to drive school buses. Is that right? Yes. Rob Trot, this was your school bus driver. <laughs> Yeah, how, he, he went to school. Us. What? You oh, he went to school with um, my sons, Mike and Bob Oshinsky. Well, you obviously remember him. Yes, I do. I so, see. So, yeah. tell us a little bit about Rob Trotz. You well, on the was bus. he well behaved on the bus? Was he well behaved? None of the kids were, <laughs> <laughs> including my own. <laughs> well, how was Rob? He was a good kid. Good kid. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of Dryden's best. Well, no. How, how about that? How about that for an endorsement <laughs> for Rob Trot? Yes. Well, good. Nice Thank you. you. Take care. You too. Keep up the good fishing. Thank you. That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. Well, a lot of people are down here at the Detroit RV and Camper Show looking around. You can see them. A lot of people are also checking what would be the lower end on prices. Uh, these would be the pop-up campers. Dave Roche, you might have seen this guy on Big Buck Night. You were the guy with the deep pockets. That's right. That's West, right. Yeah, Westland RV uh, donated that uh, Coleman camper. That's right. That's right. Now we did have Ned Gray, whose name was drawn. He was a, a he pledged twenty five bucks up at WDCQ. That's a nice Middle. pledge. Twenty five dollars. Well, it's he on didn't the, even have to pledge anything, but he, he did. He did. He and he won the camper. He couldn't be here now, but let, let's talk about the Coleman. You know, I hate to say low end. It's on the low end compared to a motorhome. But this one right here, for example, it's a 10-footer. That's a 10-foot box. It has a king bed on one side and a double bed on the other side. And yet it has 10 foot of interior room with a, with a heater, with a refrigerator, dinette, and an inside stove or in a, and an outside stove. Now, this one's a lot bigger. Yeah, this is a 12-foot box, Fred. And uh, they get a king-size bed on both ends. But in addition to that, it has the slide-out dinette. And uh, you can eat at that dinette. The windows are all open. You still feel like you're outside. Plus, it gives you a lot more room. Well, this 12-footer here has a slide-out. That's right. For eating, but it has another 
Yep. This has a what it's called a tip out, and it's uh, kind of a bay window over the kitchen uh, uh, galley area with the stove and the sink, which actually gives you even more floor room. Plus, it gives you a bay window effect for. Uh, for whoever's cooking dinner. Now I'm inside what used to be called your pop-up or tent trailer. Check out this little feature here. I lift up what looks like a table and revealing really a complete bathroom. Here it is, a complete flush toilet plus a shower. In fact, you can put the shower right up there. Now there's a shower curtain that goes around this so you can take a shower in privacy right here in this camper. But the question might be that you'd have is, what about the water, the wastewater? Where does that go? Well, it's right here, Fred. It's a uh, cassette potty holding tank here. It just pulls right out when it's full. And you take it to your dumping station or wherever you're going to dump it. Undo the cap. Dump it out. Vent it. Empties real fast. Put the cap on. Turn it over. Back slides in. right back now, in.